So for those of you who have maybe seen some of the videos on my channel, you know that one of my big influences is comedy, particularly stand-up comedy. And I defend comedy all the time, regardless if it's coming from the left, right, or non-political whatsoever. For example, people on the left I've defended include people like Kathy Griffin, other arts like the play where they supposedly, someone dressed up like Trump and they were going to kill him. I've defended all of that. I, I, uh, Samantha B. I've defended some of her comments, Stephen Colbert. Uh, so yeah, I think comedy is comedy and it should be allowed to go. Uh, I'm not, if I'm offended by comedy, I just change the channel. Now, I could talk about whether or not I think the comedy is successful or criticize it in that level, but I'm so tired of people trying to shut down comedy. I My heroes in comedy are people like George Carlin, Lenny Bruce. People, the idea of comedy to me is to be pushing, constantly pushing the envelope. That's what I think. And Patrice O'Neill said it best where he's talking about, like, look, all jokes come from the same place trying to be funny. You shouldn't be allowed to say, like, oh, well, this one offended me. Well, the same one that offended you came from the same place to all those comedy jokes that you like. So, in lieu of that, let's talk about this Louis C.K. situation. So, Louis comes out, and there's a bootleg of some of his set that's released that has people all up in arms. And basically, he's picking on, like, non-traditional gender people. And the big joke that upset everyone is, he says something effective like, what's wrong with kids these days? Uh, they're wearing suits and ties, lecturing us on policy and things like that. Dude, I don't care. You're not, I don't have to listen to you just because someone got shot in your school. By the way, you didn't get shot. You pushed some fat kid in the way of the bullet so that you could escape. Now, it's actually, I think it's a funny joke. It's crude, right? If you had someone, like, for example, someone came out and was like, my son was shot, I find this highly offensive. Say that to my face. Well, yeah, but I could say that people have made jokes about suicide, abortion, drug overdoses. Like, that's going to offend someone. Like, everyone's lost someone to some of these things. So does that mean that they then have the right to silence this way? You can't make fun of suicide because I know someone that committed suicide. Or you can't make fun of drug overdose because I know someone that, or cancer or heart disease. And, you know, one of my favorite bits recently is Norm MacDonald doing the bit about cancer, you know, fighting cancer. It's like, oh, you, you finally lost that battle with cancer. And he's just mocking the idea. He's like, what? It's not a battle against cancer. Like, cancer took your wife after you died or something like that. Like, well, it's people that have personally know people that died for cancer, but, oh, that's offensive, you know. Look, it's a joke. That's the point. Uh, I don't have a problem with the joke whatsoever. If you have a problem, that's fine. But what I really wanted to focus on in this video is there are now comedians coming out telling Louis C.K. like, oh, this is over the line. Uh, two of the more prominent ones that I wanted to speak of was Judd Apatow, who you might know from, like, basically all those Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill movies. Yeah, that all started with Judd Apatow. He did movies like Super Bad. Um... I think he did the Zack and Mary make a porno. Uh, but basically all of those types. Of, uh, the 40-Year-Old Virgin, I think, was Judd Apatow. So he uh, did all of those movies. And then uh, Jim Carrey, who you probably know, did like the Ace Ventura, the Masks. And it's now just a rabid anti-Trumper who's painting weird pictures about Trump being the devil or something like that. But that's one of the things that I find really ironic. Look, you expect Puritans of both the left and right to go after art and comedy and video games and music and things like that. That's what they've always done, right? If you've researched anything into comics, for example, we used to have the comics code back in the 50s that were like, basically a bunch of comic book artists were told like, you can't deal with these subjects or else the government will come in and start censoring you. So they just kind of had this unwritten code where it was like, oh, we have to be totally PC. Uh, you had the big music scare in the 90s where you know they were proposing all this censorship for music and you ended up having like rap artist, uh, D. Snyder, who was from Twisted Sister, so it would be kind of metal, and John Denver, who's one of the most least uh, controversial music of all time, uh, kind of does like gospel or folk music, uh, go in front of Congress to argue why this type of censorship was bad. Uh, but this happens over and over. Every decade you start to see this coming up. Well, now what's different this time is with the new PC world we live in, you actually see the artists themselves criticizing other artists, demanding that they be politically correct. So Judd Apatow is talking about how this is funny and outdated and old. And it's like... Well, wait a minute, let's use that same lens. Like, if you're going to use that lens to criticize Louis C.K., then can we turn that very lens, lens on your comedy? Because there seems to be a lot of stuff that could be considered questionable in this new world of some of the comedies he used to do. For example, in, like, how many times was things like underage drinking encouraged in his movies? Or things like getting girls drunk to have sex with them in movies like Superbad? Uh, how many times were, you know, people that he was in conjunction with friends, like, I know he personally didn't do the movie This Is The End, but there's rape jokes all through that. One of the characters gets raped, and that's people he works with routinely. I don't remember him calling that out, you know. 
All I'm saying, and I don't think any of that should be called out, by the way. I think it's all comedy. But I'm saying once you put that moralistic uh, preening on, you have to turn it on yourself. So is Judd Apatow going to start demanding that his movies be pulled from shelves, his older movies that mock things like getting girls drunk to have sex with them or violence or underage drinking and things like that? I think not. For these people, it's all... And see, Louis was crude to all sorts of people his entire career. It was only when he goes after a sacred cow that they get upset. Oh, gun shooting victim. Now that's his bridge too far. Now he could have picked on Christians. There wouldn't have been a word about it. In fact, he routinely did. He could have picked on all sorts of groups. Picked on men all the time. Picked on fathers. No problem, no problem, no problem. But once he goes after someone, he's now been labeled a pariah because of the Me Too stuff, which I'm not even going to get into. And now the fact that he's perceived as right wing, you know. And I see this a lot, like on South Park's a good example where uh, everybody, like, South Park does a good job of attacking sides from all sides. They'll do the left-wing side, defend them, or they'll attack the left, and they'll attack the right. And it's funny to watch people, you know, when they're attacking the left, everyone on the right's happy. And then when they're attacking the right, everyone on the left's happy. But they're offended when their people are getting attacked. It's just nonsense. And that's what I'm seeing here. Now, the difference is with the South Park business, you're talking about just regular fans like me. Okay, we're not the artists. We're not the big-name comedians. But here we see big-name comedians that are saying, like, oh, no, you shouldn't do this. Jim Carrey's examples are even more ridiculous. Like, a movie like The Mask that advocates cartoon violence, catcalling women, uh, Ace Ventura, which, you know, basically the entire movie is making fun of transgenders because the main bad guy is actually a woman, or it's actually a man dressed up as a woman the whole time, and they're picking on, you know, parts of their anatomy and things like that. So should we turn that lens to Ace Ventura? Should we turn it to The Mask? I don't think so. I love those movies, despite the fact that I don't like... Jim Carrey's political stance, I still enjoy his work, and it all came from a place of comedy. It wasn't trying to hurt people or anything like that. It was trying to be funny, and it was funny. I think the Ace Ventura movies are hilarious. But it's just, it's shocking to me to just see how, like, where we're at as a society where we can have, like, yes, it just the total subjective nature of you're allowed to be offensive as long as you have these left-wing causes, but if you're offensive and attack those left-wing causes, now all of a sudden that's a bridge too far. You know, and we saw this all the time. For example, you can never make rape jokes. But then, you know, the same people that were saying that, well, then when there was someone put a cartoon out of the Democrat donkey raping Donald Trump, oh, well, that's, you know, that's kind of funny. And it's like, to me, it's all comedy. I don't have a problem with any of it. But you don't get to sit there and be, uh, to be double standards like this. It just doesn't make sense. And it's even sadder to see actual comedians doing this. So, yeah, I hope comedians start to stick together and say, to push back against those comedians that are trying to downgrade this art and say, like, look, we're going to do what we want. By the way, you know, it's the same people that, you know, they'll be out there saying, oh, baby, it's cold outside the Christmas song. That's a terrible song. That advocates rape. But meanwhile, they're celebrating artists like Jay-Z as heroes in the community and things like that that sing songs that advocate basically about raping women or shooting cops or shooting opposing drug people. Like, it, it's just, it's unbelievable. And it goes back to the idea of cultural Marxism, which is there are groups that are oppressed and oppressors. So the idea of, like, someone leaving CK, well, he is an oppressor at this point, and so you can attack his comedy. And again, this is based on uh, gender lines, racial lines, ability lines, uh, sexual preference on Any group you could separate it into oppressed and oppressor. But the most important thing to remember about cultural Marxism is the number one rule that applies above anything else is you have to have the left-wing ideology. You could fit into every category of the oppressed group. So a uh, black suppressed, uh, you could be a black Muslim, lesbian, transgender, for example. All groups that would normally be said, oh, they're terribly oppressed, we need to listen. But then come out and be like, yeah, I'm actually for right-wing ideology. I don't like this cultural Marxism. And you will be attacked stronger than the, just the average oppressor group type people. We saw that with Kanye West. That's why they came at him so hard. And so that's why we see where Louis C.K. can be attacked for this comedy, you know, and the, how it's over the line. But it, the le people that are perceived on the left-wing side that want to have comedy about shooting Donald Trump or something like that, that, that would be no problem. And again, I have no problem with that comedy. Even if it's directed towards groups that I'm in or people that I like, I have no problem. Oftentimes I laugh because I separate the comedy from it. It doesn't matter. You know, like... I laughed when Samantha B called Ivanka a feckless C-word. I thought that those two words together were funny. Yes, it was crude. Yes, it was directed at people that I enjoy. The same with Stephen Colbert when he said that Trump's mouth was Putin's C-holder. Like, I also found that to be funny. Just the, the crudeness of it's what made me laugh. Not the political nature behind it. 
You know, so I'm not saying to censor com comedians on the left side. I'm just saying that I find the double standard to be ridiculous, and it's really sad to see, you know, these people, these comedians that want to kind of be uh, PC now saying, no, 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 it's, uh, Louis went too far here. Well, will they go back and do that to their own comedy? I don't think so, so... Yeah, I'm always going to defend comedy no matter what side it comes from. Now, someone might say, well, wait a minute. Didn't you just do a video that was kind of criticizing a CNN panel for making fun of Trump supporters as toothless and stupid racist? Yeah, but that's not comedy. That's being portrayed as objective truth. Like, that's journalism is how they're portraying it. That's different. Like, there's a difference between someone telling a joke about white people, like Dave Chappelle might tell a joke about white people, and you're like, oh, you get it, it's comedy. There's some truth to what he's saying, probably, or he feels a kernel of truth, but it's comedy. That's one thing. And then it'd be another thing if Dave Chappelle came out in a non-comedic set and was like, I think that all uh, Trump supporters are toothless. I think they're stupid. I think they're all racist. That's not comedy. That's... You know, and everybody knows that there's a difference, but people want to conflate it to try to be like, oh, you're being such a snowflake. And that's the other thing you see. You see tons of people coming out now. In the last video I just did about uh, AOC supporters talking about sniping Scalise, who'd been shot by Bernie Sanders. If you read a lot of comments, what people are saying is like, oh, we're, now Trump supporters can't take a joke. I thought, you know, now they're the special snowflakes. No, I'm not even saying those Twitter people that said that should be censored or punished in any way whatsoever. I'm not saying that. I'm just pointing out the double standard. You didn't get to be super offended, you know, the, the way Trump speaks, and then cheer for people speaking like that. In the same way, I feel that I don't, like, I think it's both crude and it's childish, but I'm, I'm indifferent either way to either side doing it. But we saw the left, you know, all these politicians on the left jump and scream, oh, what Trump's saying, it's so terrible, his words are so terrible. And now they're out there saying, like, well, he said terrible things, so why shouldn't we be allowed to say terrible things? Okay, then it's a wash. Great. Now, back to policy. Thank you. You know, so it's like that in comedy, even even just the same. Uh, you're criticizing these people like Abtown and Jim Carrey are criticizing one side because it fits their ideology. That's someone who's making an argument against things that are in their ideology. But they won't hesitate to make fun of other people's ideology in just as crude manners, just as offensive manners. They think that that's absolutely funny, so... All right, well, if you like this video, please click the like and subscribe buttons, and uh, have a good one.